I built this CNC router about 15 years ago, and it's worked really well for me. It cuts accurately, it's reliable, and it makes real parts. This machine hasn't been a project for a long time. It's been a tool for me. But over the years, I've wondered whether the motion itself could be smoother than it is. This video is the first in a short series where I'm addressing upgrades I've wanted to do to my CNC machine for quite a while. Not because the machine doesn't work well, but because I've reached a point where refinement is important to me. Some of these changes are about performance, others are about reliability, convenience, and making it easier for everyday use. Nothing here is sponsored, nothing here is being upgraded just for the sake of upgrading it. Every change in this series addresses a real limitation I've run into or something that would make my machine more productive to use. Over the course of this series, I'll be making a number of changes. Some electrical, some mechanical, some purely about usability. I'll be adding a water-cooled spindle, replacing my worn-out limit switches, automating dust collection startup through use of the Mach 3 software, and automating the spindle cooling pump through the software as well. Each episode will focus on one change at a time, why it matters, and whether it actually improves how the machine behaves in real use. This first episode is specifically about motion smoothness. More accurately, it's about unlocking performance that already exists in the UC100 controller that I've been using, but I've never really taken full advantage of it. This isn't about buying new hardware. It's about understanding and using what I already have to its fullest potential. I originally installed the UC100 when I was trying to transfer my CNC machine from Windows XP to Windows 10. That transition never really worked out. And Mach 3 on Windows XP ended up being the most reliable setup for me on this machine. So I ended up leaving the UC100 on the machine more or less as a glorified parallel port. What I didn't do at that time was revisit the configuration. I traded the UC100 as a replacement for a printer cable on my parallel port rather than a controller with different motion characteristics. In hindsight, that meant I was probably leaving a lot of capability on a table, especially in how step pulses are generated and timed. To make these changes, I have to get into the electronics cabinet, and that's not an easy process. Any motion-related adjustment means opening everything up and getting into this tight space. I packed everything into this old PC cabinet, and I think I did a pretty good job. It looks good to me. It's functional, it's held up for years, but nothing about it is quick access. Since I'm already in here, I'm also re-documenting the connections, how many inputs and outputs I have left to make use of for my future projects. None of that is necessary for the changes I'm making today, but it'll help me when I wanna do the future upgrades. What you're seeing here is how the UC100 is currently driving the stepper motors. Up to now, I've been running this system the way it was set up when I was running it on parallel port. That isn't necessarily wrong, but the settings are conservative from what they could be and uh, emphasize reliability over smoothness. I'm changing the step-related settings to better match what the UC100 is capable of without changing motors, drivers, mechanics, or G-code. However, I do acknowledge that refining my G-code is also a great place to bring out smoothness in machine operations. So specifically, I've been running quarter microstepping, and I'm going to change that to 16th microstepping. That increases the resolution available by about four times. That will have particular impact during acceleration, deceleration, and short segment moves. The goal here isn't so much to increase accuracy. The machine was already accurate. 
The goal is smoother motion and less excitation of mechanical resonances. This isn't a hardware upgrade, it's a configuration change. Making this change requires physically switching the microstep settings on the drivers. Before making any changes, I'm running a baseline test. I'll use the same file, the same feeds and speeds, and the same camera and microphone position for the before and after tests. The only variable will be the micro-stepping settings. I'm not expecting dramatic differences necessarily, but it'll be interesting to see how it behaves. I'll be watching and listening to see if there's any difference in how the machine behaves during direction changes and transitions where smoothness matters most. I also placed a bowl of water on the machine bed. This isn't meant to be a precise measurement. I just thought it might give us a visual rever reference of how much vibration is happening. With the drivers set to 16th microstepping, I'm running the exact same code again under the exact same conditions. <laughs> Well, the difference is subtle, and it's smaller than I had hoped, but there is a difference. If you listen to the motors themselves, they definitely sound quieter and smoother to me. Um, there's still a lot of noise from the machine itself, and as I got investigating it further, I discovered that my Z-axis makes a vibration noise when it's going down. I believe it's because there's a little bit of play as the lead screw reverses direction and there's no resistance holding, holding it tight because it's going with gravity rather than against it. So I think what I want to try and do is to put a hydraulic dampener on that access and see if that'll take care of that vibration. But that will be the subject of my next video. I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope to see you again next time. Thanks for watching.